my journey with uh, you know handling the uh, country operations for india and then i was handed over the responsibilities uh, to lead korea as well as well <clears throat> alongside these two countries there are some small countries which roll up to india like uh, bangladesh and sri lanka as well which i am uh, looking after so that's that's about uh, my role over here well, like when we speak about ping pong it is like a payment service provider so when we say payment service provider um, on the domestic not on the domestic side but on the export side of things you know so we help um, an exporter uh, get their money back into their uh, you know bank accounts at a very low rate and at a good uh, time like a uh, good time frame so that's that's about ping pong uh, in india we deal with uh, export remittances and uh, outside of india we have other products as well uh, like you know uh, we help in supplier payments to the importers um, we have our own wallets also we have a payment gateway which works for the you know d2c brands who have their own website right so our, our payment gateways they are actually we own the entire life cycle so right from payment reception into the payment gateway to finally uh, the payment being converted into the desired currency and then remittance into the bank account is something that we own entirely so that's uh, that's about ping pong um yeah that's that's been the journey of ping pong so far we are active into the export uh businesses so helping the exporters to get their payments is something that we are uh, doing and within the export segment also uh when we when we started our journey in india to in 2019 we had started with e-commerce exports so like companies like uh, ebay and amazon uh sellers who used to sell in these platforms used to take payments from us but with our experience and uh, uh, with our experience in the country for some time we quickly understood that the market was very much ready to uh, you know uh, to to uh, to you know tap into the other segments also not only e-commerce exports but you know traditional exporters also for that matter traditional good goods exporters freelancers uh, service exporters so nowadays we are catering to all these, these segments b2b services and goods freelancers uh, we are expanding our our portfolio to some other niche platforms like affiliate marketing also so yeah I mean, that's these are the some of the segments which we you know cater to so frankly uh, speaking i joined ping pong somewhat late i mean uh, the operations had started in 2019 only in fact 2018 we were busy getting the required licenses from rbi uh, to operate in this country so that's uh, that's been our mantra that wherever we operate we operate after getting the required licenses so from 2018 to 2019 this was a period of getting market ready and from 2019 we started our operations so we started with e-commerce uh, as i said uh, we we didn't know how exactly india is going to perceive a fintech company like us right so we wanted to go with a very stable uh, business and learn the compliance practices product requirements of the country through through a stable platform like amazon and other e-commerce platforms right so that's how we had started in 2019 and immediately after that um, you know like 2021 after like i, I joined uh, we realized that we were already catering to a good uh, you, you know a good deal of e-commerce customers right and they they were our majority segment at that point in time so we realized the need for expansion we realized the need of diversifying ourselves to other segments and that's when we started introducing offline uh, uh, product like offline exports as well so when we say about offline within offline basically all the traditional exporters come and within offline you can in fact count some of the d2c exporters as well like who operate uh, but not through a proper market base but through their own platforms like be it website or through other means so we started venturing into those uh, product categories last year was uh, i mean 2022 and 2021 late end of 2021 was the year of experimentation for us while we were uh, definitely doubling down on our um, you know other staple categories like e-commerce exports and all 
we were trying to experiment um with with uh, these segments as well like freelancers service exporters goods exporters who used to deal outside of a marketplace so it's been a very good journey so far we have been able to work backwards from the requirements of uh, indian customers and according to that we are coming up with new products to cater to those segments also so very positive if i if i can say the evolution of ping pong into uh, in in the last 3 and 1/2 years has been very very uh, positive we are growing at a rate of like until last year we grew at a rate of more than 200 percentage year on year this year also we are looking for a three di- uh, three digit growth uh, even even though the base is much higher we are eyeing a three digit growth so um uh, from 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 our operations perspective um uh, things have been very positive we are getting uh, you know favorable uh, investments uh to do in the market uh in the indian market and at the same time from market uh, uh, readiness perspective we are being well uh, appreciated by all our partners um, all the you know the bodies government bodies and all who we work with so yeah i mean that's uh, look things are looking pretty great here right yeah sure so uh what we realized after we started operating here for some time we started realizing that the core product itself may not be enough right because when we speak about the traditional uh, methods of uh, getting the payments uh, in uh, you know it it has always been banks you know so and and banks have so many things to provide to an exporters like uh, talk about letter of credit and all the traditional things which really goes a long way in in uh, helping a customer's journey right so what we realized was if we stick to our core product which is just um, helping a, an exporter to repatriate the, the funds into the bank account that may not be enough right so we had to uh, we had to experiment with with our value proposition as well at the same time we had to look for different ways of serving our customers right so uh, when we when we talk about the value proposition we started uh, like you would say we probably we were the first psp uh, who introduced the concept of uh, you know building a entire ecosystem for the exporters so like we started introducing um, uh, you know uh, services like uh, business consulting for the exporters who used to uh, transact with us helping them grow their existing business and helping them venture into the new businesses as well so we came up with new products uh, which which especially deals with those things uh, something like a ping pong bap program ping pong accelerate program which is nothing but a business consulting for a customer who is already uh, in a certain marketplace to uh, to help them grow the uh, business in those uh, existing marketplaces and at the same time help them diversify into the new uh, uh, marketplaces as well right so that's something that we started doing we probably i mean we can say it with a lot of pride that this year we have been able to sway a lot of customers from banks and other competitors to ping pong just because of this additional offering that we are providing and thankfully what we are observing is um our our competitors are also trying to go the same route that you have to uh, you know you have to expand your overall value proposition uh for the exporters so that's something that we have been doing we are also uh, experimenting with some of our internal products which can help our customers like you know um uh, there is one way of rece- so basically the way ping pong works is is through the virtual bank accounts that we provide to the customers right and these virtual bank accounts in turn comes from the partner banks that ping pong has here so those bank accounts are given to the customers and the customers integrate these bank accounts from all the platforms where they expect the payments to come to them right so uh, this this was a ongoing model for us but we realized then that, that in this model there was a lot of hand holding which was required to help the customers uh, in integrating the uh, the bank accounts in the desired platforms and in clearing the funds also when the funds hit ping pong and all right so we started thinking about ways to solve it and back in 2021 january i think uh we introduced a new product which goes by the name request payment so request in request payment there is a payment link in, uh which is uh created in the customer's uh, dashboard itself and the customers can use that link to 
you know uh, to upload their their invoices and send it to whoever they want to receive the payments from so this is really making lives easier for especially the freelance segment who want to receive like smaller value payments and all right so um, that's that's another thing that we we are doing so basically not just value proposition we are experimenting with the new products also which can cater to the customers then at the same time we are also looking for ways to expand our target segments like i already briefly touched upon that that we had started with e-commerce now we are experimenting with new categories like b2b and b2c goods and services sectors we are catering to the affiliate marketing se- uh, segment also freelance segment also and with all these new segments that we are adding to our fold uh, there comes a requirement of building the required uh, uh, compliance practices to make sure that nothing wrong is coming through us you know it, it is getting approved through us so we are getting uh, completely ready with respect to our processes and our approval processes as well to make sure that we do a legit business uh, for for all those who are transacting with us so that's 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 how we are you know growing in this and that's how we are experimenting in indian context uh, i'll not be in a position to quote any number as such but in terms of percentages i would say that when we had started in 2019 like for the first year or so we must have been like in the e-commerce segment we we our our market share was less than 10 percentage and at this point moment while we are speaking in terms of the uh, different psps who are in this market uh, we have been able to capture at least 40 percentage of the market share in the e- e-commerce segment itself and we are going very strong in that respect so yeah that's 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 how we are growing in uh, i'll not be in a position to quote any number as such but in terms of percentages i would say that when we had started in 2019 like for the first year or so we must have been like in the e-commerce segment we we our our market share was less than 10 percentage and at this point moment while we are speaking in terms of the uh, different psps who are in this market uh, we have been able to capture at least 40 percentage of the market share in the e- e-commerce segment itself and we are going very strong in that respect so yeah that's 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 how we are growing in, uh, you know that's and uh, really uh, basically whoever is uh, this this uh, increase in the percentage share that i mentioned it is definitely coming from our competitors absolutely absolutely i mean um all i can say is india was the fourth country uh, which ping pong had uh, you know started their operations in like uh, when we speak about the uh, country uh, like global countries uh, um so you know we started our operations with us we went to uh, other countries like vietnam luxembourg and then we came to india so um 2019 till now three and half of years of experience uh, you know in in indian marketplace uh, what we are realizing is uh, we have been able to show the uh, the potential that indian uh, you know the indian sellers have here right and at the same time we have been able to prove through the numbers that we are doing so we are as i as i already mentioned that we are growing by three digit number consistently for the last three and half years so that's that's been the top reason why the con- like the company is also investing quite a lot in india so like with respect to human resources with respect to the different products which indian team needs right i mean for that matter the product that we mentioned uh, the request payment product that was a genesis of the indian team itself so we 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 felt that there is a need for us to do something to for those who who you know transact in small amount so in that way if uh, like the con- uh, the company is investing in terms of products they are investing in terms of human resources and all the things are uh, growing strength to strength for us at the same time not from company perspective what we are realizing if you see about uh, the overall macro economic perspective for india right last year we ended up doing somewhere close to 500 billion dollar plus uh, in terms of exports um talk about uh, the different initiatives that the government is taking talk about the tax holidays the government is providing to the exporters and all right 
so everything has been very um, positive in, in the last few years in, even though we were struggling through covid uh, period and all uh, in terms of exports there was not a big lull period uh, so as to speak about exports from india so uh, the priorities are well cut out for the government it's also and we are well assisted by by all the government bodies we are working with at the same time we are having strong tie ups with our partners also who are helping us in introducing to the right people who can make lives easier for our customers so yeah i mean uh, things are looking pretty uh, positive for us so if you talk about cbdc i mean in december like december itself it got introduced with four four uh, regions in india right um at the same time uh, when we talk about the uh, the the institutions who are going to immediately adopt it they are going to be four banks who are starting with it right one of them being a government bank and the other one are like the most uh, prominent uh, national banks in india um if i have to say from banking perspective uh, we are not tied up with any one of these partners who are going to adopt cbdc for now right so of course i mean there are a lot of banks which are uh, which are planned next to adopt uh, this this uh, you know digital rupee uh, when that happens that happens and at that point in time definitely uh, there can be some impact but at the same time another perspective that i i wanted to add here was that um the the rbi rbi has a regulation that uh, all the third party payment service providers like us we are not supposed to hold the money into the in, into our wallet so basically when a customer is looking to receive a payment the money comes into the virtual bank account of pingpong customers and from there it is automatically withdrawn into the bank account so the other part of that is uh, also true that if the customers are willing to make a payment first of all they need to top up their wallet they, they need to top up the pingpong wallet but that part is not allowed here right so when we talk about digital rupee where i'm like uh, this is this is a new thing for me also and probably it needs to be studied more but all i can i can see is this will be more uh, pertinent to someone who has to make supplier payments for their imports right uh, because they can make the supplier payments through the digital rupee and all uh, through the cbdc but for for us we only uh, can support due to the rbi norms we can support only inbound payments where the cbdc is not going to play a role uh if we look forward by maybe a couple of years more uh, let's say a couple of years down the line in that case there is a possibility that cbdc can be adopted by other countries who we are transacting with like where where are importers like where are exporters are receiving the payments from so when that happens then we have to be market ready to you know integrate with the right banks to receive the payments so that's that's how i would want to put it that maybe we need to think it from not from india perspective but from where indian exporters are receiving the money from right and then we have to be ready in those countries to receive the money into our bank accounts in 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 that currency so that could be the way to go for us next 2 to 3 years our success mantra in the last 3 and 1/2 years has been probably being patient and understanding our customers needs you know obsessing over our customers that's that's something which is in our dna and which runs through every one of us who work in ping pong so that's not going to change for sure and that is going to that is going to be our uh, you can say a torch light which we would look after to to do everything in india be it coming up with new products to make lives easier for our customers for our exporters so we would definitely want to experiment with a few uh, products which are uh, traditional banks are providing to the big uh, customers right uh, be it lending or be it um you know different products which kind of increases the overall cash cycle and all so that's something that we would like to uh, innovate with, uh, around and as i said uh, our philosophy will be to you know know more uh, uh, about our customers look for ways to uh, get closer to them right look for ways to connect with them and hear from them the different things which, which might be still a pain point for us even though they might be with pinpong there is a possibility that there there could be a few things which they are not able to reveal to us right so we would look for ways 
in which uh, we can connect to our uh, customers, know about their requirements, and then work backwards from there to come up with right products and right processes to make lives easier and uh, to have a, to to make their lives really pleasant uh, with respect to their association with Pingfong. So that's something uh, we would we would look to do. At the same time, uh, if I can say from finance perspective, our goal would definitely be to make a regional uh, unicorn in uh, in India. Uh, in the next couple of years, that's something that we are definitely looking up to, that uh, we would want to make a regional unicorn in India. And uh, if that has to be done, there it will definitely uh, you know entail a lot of investments from human resource point of view. Um, uh, it will definitely require invest investments from product point of view to cater to wider segment of customers who can bring in right uh, you know business to Pingfong. So the, these are the things that we are looking forward to uh, with respect to the Indian context in the next uh, couple of years or so.